Hey guys, this is going to be a tutorial on how to install a Aura System Manager 8.1. To begin the process, what we need to do is go to the Avaya support website, go to downloads, and find the download for System Manager 8.1, which is here on this page. Aura System Manager 8.1, and if we scroll down here to 8.1 download or arrange by date, it's probably easier. Go here. We're going to be downloading the file, which I've already downloaded up front anyway. This OVA here. We're going to also need the mandatory patch as well, and we'll need to download that, which I've already downloaded. We're going to be installing it using the via SDM client, which I have open here. To configure this up from scratch, what we need to do is we need to add a location into the application. So select location, click on new, and we'll just call it a via lab, and then click save. Now we've created our location, we actually need to um, create a platform now. So this is where we're going to connect our SDM client to our VMware ESXi host. So go to platforms, click on add, enter the platform name, ESXi01 for example, and then what we have to do is we need to add our VMware servers FQDN, which is present in the certificate, otherwise this will fail. So we have this little name here, copy that. If it actually did copy and paste, we'll find out. There we go. We have to enter the username and the password to get onto the VM ESXi host, and then from platform type, we just set AVP ESXi, and then click Save. And then what will happen is the SDM client will go and connect. Once we accept this certificate, it will go away and it will connect to the ESXi host, and any virtual machines that are on there will then appear in here. Now, because this is my lab system, I have a few virtual machines on here, but what we'll do is we'll just ignore those and uh, we'll install a new system manager once the, uh, the process has completed. So, go back to our SDM client. You can see that it's doing some stuff and it's complained about my Cisco Call Manager VM because it's not recognized via virtual machine, so that error would be expected. But we can simply ignore that because we're not going to be worried about that. So if I go to Applications now, you'll see that it's actually, uh, it's found all the virtual machines I have running on my ESXi host. Now, in order for SDM to upload the OVAs into the ESXi host, what we have to do is there is a file path, C program files, Avaya, Avaya SDM client, default artifacts. This is the location, um, it's like the software library location for the SDM client. So any OVAs and patches that you download from the Avaya website that you wish to deploy, um, they need to basically be put into this location here in default artifacts and then what will happen is SDM will will find those and it will use those to you know give you in the give them in the a list like a drop down list and you can select them from there. So the OVA I downloaded uh, earlier on was this one, the latest 8.1 for system manager and then also the mandatory patch as well. So now they're in there. I can progress with the rest of the install. So to install the uh, the OVA, the system manager one Simply just click on New once you're under Applications. Select the platform type, which is the ESXi that I created just a moment ago, um, and select the data store that you would like the, uh, the virtual machine to be installed into. And we only have one, so we'll be selecting that one. And then simply click Next. Now, because we've uploaded our OVA and our patches in here, what we can simply do is just click on Software Library, and then from the drop-down list here, we can select our OVA which is this one in here. So I'll select that one. And then what happens at this stage is SDM will check to see if the VMware ESXi host actually has enough resource. So it'll, it'll make sure it has enough disk space, enough memory, enough CPU um, resource, and also whether it has enough to reserve that as well. We've got all green ticks on here, so we're all good for that. And what we can also do through SDM as well is once the 
OVA has been installed is we can actually get it to um, apply a patch at the first time as well. Now we need to do a mandatory patch for um, a VIA or a system manager. Now if I just go back to the website quickly, in here, this is the mandatory patch here. So I'm just making sure that this patch is the one that I want to use, which is 819814. So if I go back to SDM, just make sure that I've got the right one. And that's all fine. So OVA selection and then patch. You don't have to apply the patch after the install. Um, using SDM, you can just upload the patch using WinSCP or some other sort of SFTP or SCP client. You can use it whichever you want. But the mandatory patch has to go on before uh, you can log into System Manager once it's installed. So now we've got all these, we can simply click Next. And all we have to do is give it a name, so I'll just call it Lab SMGR01. And then we have to give it an IP address as well, obviously. So my IP, put that in. And then we have to give it our DNS servers. We also have to give it a, uh, a management fully qualified domain name, so this will be the host name, so I'll call it SMGR01. IPv6 we don't need to worry about, so we'll select our time zone. I'm here in the United Kingdom, so I will be selecting Europe, London. We don't need to worry about the public IP addresses. And the virtual host name, what this is for is um, this is for geo redundant system managers and also for the certificate um revoke list as well, which we'll um we'll head into detail about in that in another video. But I'm just gonna call this SMGR. In fact, let me just go up because I need to I made a, a very slight mistake here. SMGR01 dot via lab dot local. So we'll just call this SMGR and then via Lab.local. I'm going to enter my SNMP v3 parameters. These don't have to be correct from the very beginning. You can just put anything in here and then go and modify it afterwards if you don't have it to hand. And then what we need to do is we need to just add a, a, a command line user. It can be anything of your choice, um, but it does say here don't use these usernames because these are ones that are in built into the system already like admins, initial, postgres, root, they are some of these would already exist so we can't use them so we have to use something else so I'm just going to use mummy because I'm an Iron Maiden fan you can schedule um, a system manager backup if you want but this can be left until afterwards it's uh, quite easily configured through the, uh, the system manager web interface. Looks like I have a problem with uh, typing passwords in today. There we go. And then you can enable EASG if you like. It's one to enable it, two to disable. It basically just um, enables a via logins if um, they need to log into the system for any reason on a remote session, a via can log in. And then the other thing that's good about using the SDM client, you can install the OVA file um, straight through VMware, so uh, wherever it is. Where is it gone? Oh, here we are. We can do it like this. Yeah, you can upload the OVA straight into VMware, which is absolutely fine. But I would prefer doing it for SDM because you get this little box down here which gives you root access which can be uh, very handy. If you don't have root access then you can be a bit restricted. So all these parameters are now put in. It's probably a good idea just to go over them and check them to make sure you're happy with them. Because any mistake may result in you having to redeploy your OVA. And what we have to do is just select the networks. That's our um, network interfaces for the virtual machine once it's deployed are going to be on 
So now we're happy with that, we can simply click on deploy, just accept that. And then what will happen now is the virtual machine will start being deployed onto the uh, VMware host. And we can check it through here, you can see what it's doing. And if you have the VMware web page open, then what you'll see is you'll see it populate down here and it will give you um, a percentage sort of bar indication of uh, the progress of the file transfer to the VMware host. So if we go back here, this is just extracting the OVA now. This will probably take about 10 or 15 minutes to uh, to copy over. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video, and then once it's copied over, then I will uh, carry on with the video. But for the time being, I just want to make sure there we are. So you can see down here now, and probably on here as well. There, it's deploying. So that's that's good. We've got that up and running. So I'm going to leave this to copy over and then I'm going to uh, continue with the video. Okay guys, so the virtual machine now is loaded into the VMware. It's completed and what it will do now is it's powering itself on. So if we just open up the VMware console, what you can see now is a load of scripts and stuff like that are being applied to uh, the system manager. So the network parameters and all of that stuff that we set in SDM earlier on, they're just being applied to the, the virtual machine. And what we should be able to do very soon is we should be able to ping it as well just to make sure it is, on, it is online. Which it isn't yet, but... Yeah, so this is what will happen if you go back to SDM. It just runs the uh, Sanity plugin. Sometimes this isn't as very good at refreshing itself either, so the solution to that would be just to close that window and then come back in here. As we can see, uh, there was uh, there's no difference, so it's still running that Sanity check. If we go back here, there we go. So, And we have our system manager online now. Our system manager is now deployed. So what we can do now is we can log into it with our user that we added earlier on. We have to change the password. I seem to remember that the uh, password requirements were quite we're a bit higher than what they were in the uh, the previous 8.1 release. So now we're saying the installation of the, uh, the latest system manager patch is mandatory. So what we have to do now is just leave it. And it'll install the patch. It'll install the patch that we specified um, during the SDM client deployment. So at the moment that's pinging. could probably do is just go over to here and see if we can access it but it probably won't because it's still loading up or it's patching itself so yeah that is how to deploy a vital or a system manager 8.1 if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe and um, there'll be more videos to come Okay, so just following on from the uh, the video I made earlier on, I was going to make this into a second part, but I think it's relevant to cover it in this one. So the system manager has now been deployed successfully. I basically left it for an hour and um, installed the mandatory patch and all of that sort of stuff, so we're all good with that. So now if we go over to the web page, we can log in with admin and admin123, and we'll be asked to change the password. So go here. 
user ID and as admin, our current password which is admin123, and then we can simply change it to something that we like, providing it meets the, uh, the password requirements, which are outlined here. So now we can go back and log in to our system manager with our new password. And there we have it. System Manager is now installed. Obviously, it's in license error because we don't have a license. To get the license, simply you just go to pods.avaya.com, put in your license activation code, and uh, just retrieve your license. As you can see, it we are without our license. Here's our license ID, our host ID to generate a license for. And what I normally do to make things really easy is I normally go into administrators, administrative users, and I just create myself another administrator. And I just give myself a password. This is a temporary password, so we'll have to change it when we go to log in, just like we did with the admin account, and then just make it a system administrator. And then what else I do as well, not in here, in policies, I disable password agent. So I turn that off. I turn these off as well. And if we log out of here, we then follow the same steps like we did with the admin account. And that's done. So we can now log in with our secondary administrator's account. And there we have it. The other thing which I'll show you as well is if you have root access and you lock your administrator's account password so you can't log in, basically what you can do is up here we can change this network login to local login and then we could simply log in with I think it should work. I'll have to log in as root. Oh, I changed the password earlier on, that's why. And now we're logged in as a local user like we would do to the Linux OS, and we could easily reset our password here, providing it meets the password requirements, which I'm not sure this password will, but we'll try it anyway. No, that's good. So there you have it. That's how to install System Manager 8.1. And there'll be another video on how to configure it and how to install Communication Manager, how to install Session Manager, and all of the other core components. Yep, so I'm going to have to go through and uh, do the password change again because we've basically given it a new password. And because we've done that, we are then required to change the password like we would if it was a, a new account. If you like this video, give me the thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and also if you want to see more videos leave a comment down below